They might not be members of the Justice League, but the covert ops team that makes up Young Justice are still quite the formidable group. Trained by the finest heroes the world has to offer, the ever-evolving squad of young heroes continues to prove themselves mission after mission. And today, we're going to take a look at all those heroes and figure out who's truly the most powerful out of all of them. Yeah, today we're going to rank each and every hero in Young Justice from weakest to strongest. So let's get to it. What's up guys, this is Danko. I do fight breakdowns, power ranking videos, or more deep dives into your favorite characters and franchises with new videos every week. So if that seems great to you, well sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button if you want to, or hit the subscribe button while you're at it. We never actually got to see this Robin as a member of the team because Jason took up the mantle of Robin joined the team and was killed all within the same year. Now, he is a Robin, we know he's a good fighter, but we legit never saw him. He has to be on the bottom of the list here. Mal Duncan started out as the team's mission control, before taking up the mantle of Guardian himself in order to save the team from the alien warlord Despero. Guardian fights using hand-to-hand -hand combat that he learned from Black Canary, as well as a shield to defend himself with. Now, sure, Guardian can survive in a fight against Despero, but he's got no superpowers. And even compared to the other non-powered members of the team, he's dead last. Sissy King Jones was only nine years old when the League of Shadows nearly murdered her father in front of her. Luckily, he was saved by Artemis. That act would later inspire Sissy to become a hero herself, calling herself Arrowette. She's one of the most accurate women on the planet, a master archer. But compared to the other fighters on this list, and even the other archers, I don't think she can quite compete. Stephanie Brown is the daughter of Clue Master. She ran away when she was just 12 years old, but wound up kidnapped by the Reach. They intended to subject her to metagene-related experiments, but she was rescued by the team before that could happen. As a member of the Bat family, she fights a lot like any other Bat out there. Incredibly skilled, ready to throw around batarangs and weapons at a moment's notice, and always three, four steps ahead in any fight. But I think we just haven't seen enough from Spoiler to put her too high on this list. Shortly after Roy Harper became Green Arrow's sidekick Speedy, he was abducted by the Light. They cloned him and created a new Roy Harper, programmed to be a sleeper agent. This clone went on to become Red Arrow. He then briefly joined the team and even made his way up to the Justice League. At that moment, his hidden programming activated, and he betrayed the League to Vandal Savage. After becoming free from the Light's control, Red Arrow helped rescue the League as well. They went on to find and rescue the original Roy Harper. This clone of Red Arrow has essentially all the same abilities as the original, a master archer and a master fighter, taking his place it's one of the best fighters and most accurate shots in the world. Tim Drake is the third Robin and a protege of Batman. And as a member of the Bat family, well, it's safe to say that he's one of the greatest fighters in the world, a master martial artist and the pinnacle of physical potential and an expert with all weapons. However, Tim actually isn't as great of a fighter compared to the other members of the Bat family, or other non-powered heroes, and he's actually shown that on several different occasions. Of course, where Robin makes up for it is his intelligence and detective skill. He's a detective on par with Batman himself. Barbara Gordon is the daughter of Police Commissioner James Gordon, and she became one of Batman's protégés and a member of the team as Batgirl. However, after suffering an injury that left her paralyzed and confined to a wheelchair, 
she retired from field work to act as mission control. Roy Harper was the original protege of Green Arrow, until the light kidnapped him. They cloned and replaced him with a sleeper agent, until said sleeper agent, Red Arrow, found and rescued him. And obviously, the original Roy had been through years of torture and trauma, so he left behind the Red Arrow mantle and took up the name Arsenal instead. He's an amazing fighter and marksman, one of the best in the world. But really, the greatest thing going for Arsenal in a fight is his cybernetic arm and all the many weapons that he now carries into a fight. Roy really lives up to his name as Arsenal, and he's ready to blow some stuff up. Cassandra Wusan is the daughter of Lady Shiva, but after a failed mission to kill the Joker, she defected from the League of Shadows and eventually joined up with the team. Orphan is one of the greatest fighters in the world. She's surprisingly strong and tough, and she's such a skilled fighter that she's able to actually even beat her mother, Lady Shiva, when she eventually stops holding back. Artemis Croc is the daughter of Sportsmaster and Huntress, with her father training her to fight so she could help him with crimes. However, after she happened to be in the right position to save Kid Flash, she was given the opportunity to join the team. She's a master archer, one of Green Arrow's protégés, has even been the team's leader for a time. She's a skilled fighter, able to even contend with Nightwing. She relies on trick arrows to give her an advantage in a fight, and as Tigress, she carries around all sorts of weapons and gadgets, even swords and explosives. Nightwing was the first Robin, the former protege of Batman, as well as a founding member of the team. He assumed the leadership role of the Covert Ops team while Aqualad was in deep cover, but eventually stepped down after the death of Wally West. However, after working solo for some time, he led a new team of young heroes until they were ready to join the team. Though Nightwing technically possesses no superhuman powers, his courage, skill, experience, and determination combine to make him a capable and dangerous fighter. He's the world's greatest acrobat. He's a nearly perfect athlete. He's one of the best strategic and tactical minds on the planet and can take down most opponents with relative ease. Andrea Murphy was a victim of the Branchwater Security Metahuman Trafficking Ring. She ran Black Ops under the command of Cheshire, including breaking into Star Labs in order to steal a Reach device. After that mission, she had a run-in with Nightwing's Covert Ops team, where she was captured, freed of nanomachine control, and eventually, became a member of the team herself. Mist is able to transform her body into, well, mist, meaning that she can make her body intangible like a vapor. And as she fights, while well, Mist is able to make some parts of her body intangible while other parts solid, allowing her to attack without exposing herself to attacks from her opponent. Troya is the current United Nations Secretary General and was formerly the UN ambassador representing Themyscira. Like Wonder Woman, she is a princess of the Amazons. Before her tenure in politics, she was a member of the team. Troya should be in essence just as powerful as Wonder Girl. They're both mighty Amazon warriors, but we really haven't seen much from Troya at all. This probably isn't a fair place for her. She should be more powerful than this but it's the same thing as putting Jason Todd in last place. If you haven't actually shown off feats, well then you can't go too high on the list. Forager is from a race of sentient bugs on New Genesis, but he was forced to flee from his hive after working with the team in order to expose a plot to turn the bugs against the new gods. As a bug, Forager can curl himself into a ball where he's encased in pretty much his entire exoskeleton. And then, in order to attack enemies, well, he'll just hurl himself at his opponents at high speed, knocking them all down. 
he can actually shed his exoskeleton as well, but it takes a few weeks for this to grow back, so it leaves him a bit more vulnerable and open. Leslie Willis was a victim of the Branch Water Security Metahuman Trafficking Ring. She ran Black Ops under the command of Cheshire, including breaking into Star Labs for to steal a Reach device. After that mission, she had a run-in with Nightwing's covert ops team, where she was captured, freed of nanomachine control, and eventually became a member of the team herself. Livewire has the power to generate and manipulate electricity, and this power even allowed her to fight against Black Lightning. Thirteen is a member of the team, as well as one of Satana's protégés, one of the rotating hosts for Dr. Fate. Thirteen is a powerful magician, and has something called urban magic, where she can literally use the streets and the city itself in a fight. But her more powerful magic is her bad luck magic. She can basically manipulate bad luck to her advantage, and so can cause misfortune to fall on her opponents definitely comes in handy throughout a fight. Leah Briggs was a young meta forcibly pressed into service by the League of Shadows. During an attempted mission to assassinate Garth and Troya, Leah encountered the team. She fought Miss Martian in a psychic duel, but was ultimately defeated. Miss Martian then removed Leah's control trip and brought her to the Teos Metahuman Center, where she eventually joined up with the Outsiders. Now Looker is a powerful psychic, but she definitely needs a bit more practice and was ultimately way outclassed by Miss Martian. Wendy Jones was a meta teen abducted by Granny Goodness' VR goggles. She was sent to Balia where she was intended to be sold as a slave, but was rescued by Nightwing's covert ops team before that could happen. She was then brought to the Teos Metahuman Youth Center and sometime later, she joined up with the Outsiders. Wind falls the power of aerokinesis, meaning that she has complete and total control over the very wind itself and the air around you. She can create miniature twisters with her hands and use those in fights, and Windfall can even suck out all the oxygen from a room as a way to take out plenty of enemies around her. Karen Beecher was a student at Happy Harper High School where she was a student with Miss Martian and Superboy, before becoming the protege of Ray Palmer and the superhero Bumblebee. She's got the ability to shrink and manipulate her size, shrinking down to even the cellular level. She's also able to fly around for four wings that pop out of her back and can fire out stingers, small but painful blast of energy from her hands. Eduardo Dorado Jr. is the son of Eduardo Dorado Sr., the Star Lab scientist responsible for the League's Zeta Tube teleportation system. Agents of the Light kidnapped him and delivered him to the Reach, and there, scientists experimented on him and activated his metagene, giving him the ability to teleport. He would later join the Outsiders in order to become an inspiration to metateens all across the world. Initially, he had the ability to instantly teleport himself effortlessly to any location within his sightline, but could only manage a passenger in the most extreme of circumstances. But over time, he was able to overcome these limitations, and eventually he could easily teleport another person with him and no longer required line of sight. Tula is an Atlantean superhero, he's one of the best students at the Atlantean Conservatory of Sorcery. She eventually joined the team was in a relationship with Garth, before sacrificing herself to stop Tiamat. Aquagirl is very skilled in Atlantean sorcery. This looks a lot like hydrokinesis, being able to manipulate water all around her. But she's also got the unique ability to generate electricity and fire a blast out of her hands. Courtney Whitmer is the TV star of the show Stargirl, as well as a member of The Outsiders. Her powers come from the Cosmic Staff, which allows her to fly. She can create energy shields and even fire out energy blast. Brion Markov is the son of King Victor Markov and Queen Alana de Lamb Markov of Markovia. His metagene was activated by his uncle's metahuman trafficking syndicate, and he was forced to flee from his home. 
he joined the team to rescue his sister before becoming one of the founding members of the Outsiders. After killing his uncle, Brion became king himself. He can manipulate the earth in several different ways, like he can raise his own body temperature where he heats up everything around him, or turn the earth into lava and manipulate it. So that looks like creating lava armor, throwing globs of lava, and creating lava pools across the battlefield. Lagan is the former protege of Aquaman, a former member of the team known as Lagoon Boy. He was a classmate of Calder at the Conservatory of Sorcery and joined the Justice League, sharing the mantle of Aquaman alongside Calder. Being an Atlantean, Lagoon Boy is obviously superhuman, incredibly strong, tough, and fast, but he's also got the unique ability to basically inflate himself enlarging his body like a puffer fish and greatly increasing both his strength and his durability. Rocket is a superhero, being the partner and protege of Icon. She became a member of the team after Icon was inducted into the Justice League and later graduated into the league herself. She wears an inertia belt, which allows her to fly, but it also gives her the ability to create force bubbles of kinetic energy. These bubbles grow stronger if kinetic force is exerted on them, and the bubble can absorb essentially unlimited amounts of kinetic energy, so Rocket can use them as shields to contain opponents or throw them around as projectiles throughout a fight. Garth was the top student at the Atlantean Conservatory of Sorcery, where he studied alongside Calder and Tula. He eventually joined the team, but retired to teach instead before becoming the Atlantean ambassador to the UN. Like Aquagirl, Tempest is a master of Atlantean sorcery, is able to become even more powerful by summoning the power of the Tempest. He can manipulate and control water, but it's not just limited to that. Garth can also control and manipulate both electricity and ice in a fight too, making him a powerful and lethal fighter. Terra is a Markovian princess, the youngest child and only daughter of King Victor Markov and Queen Alada de Lamb Markov. After her abduction, she became a member of the League of Shadows, but later redeemed herself and joined the Outsiders. Like her brother Geoforce, Terra can manipulate different parts of the Earth. While her brother can manipulate lava, Terra can manipulate rocks. She often levitates large slabs that she can use to carry herself and others or smash them on top of opponents throughout a fight. Of course, she also carries small rocks up her sleeves that she can project at high speeds, like bullets, at unsuspecting enemies. Virgil Hawkins is a teen who is kidnapped by the Reach and used for experiments designed to unlock the Metagene, a genetic anomaly that allows for the development of superpowers, and they were successful giving him electrical abilities. He's able to magnetize objects and throw them around throughout a fight, as well as conduct and discharge electricity through his hands and even his whole body. Wolf is, well, a wolf that was freed from the control of the brain and Manjermala by Superboy after the mission was completed he was taken home with Superboy and the rest of the team, and he sometimes accompanies the team out on missions. Due to experimentation with Cobra Venom, Wolf gained superhuman strength and durability, to the point where he was even able to fight against Superboy and other powerful heroes. The new Genosphere, affectionately known as Sphere, is an extraterrestrial artifact from the world of New Genesis. She's capable of adopting several forms, including that of a flying motorcycle, which earned her the name Supercycle. Spear might not look it, but she's surprisingly powerful. She's fast enough to keep pace with the Flash, was even able to essentially body slam both Superman and Martian Manhunter. Beast Boy is the founder and leader of the Outsiders, and a former member of the team and Doom Patrol. He grew up in Karak on an animal sanctuary with his mother, Marie Logan. He received a blood transfusion of shape-shifted Martian blood from Miss Martian after being injured in an explosion, which gave him the incredible ability to shape-shift himself. 
Of course, Beast Boy is able to shapeshift into any animal he wants, which includes extraterrestrial animals. And while in the animal's form, he gains its strength, agility, and modes of movement, such as speed, flight, and flexibility. Black Mary is Mary Brunfield, a former member of the team whose codename was Sergeant Marvel. She was one of Zatanna's students until a fallout over her lust for power prompted her to leave the team. Mary possesses one-third the powers of Shazam, so she has incredible strength, speed, and durability. Now, she could access her powers by uttering Shazam, just like Billy does, but instead chooses to access them by tapping into the magic in the Earth's key lines. Consequently, that limits the use of her powers, forcing her to tap into other sources of mystic power when necessary. Cassandra Sandsmark is the daughter of the Greek god Zeus and an archaeologist, as well as the current protege of Wonder Woman. She joined the team sometime after they rescued her mother, and later, she became one of the founding members of the Outsiders. Wonder Girl is a lot like her mentor Wonder Woman. She's one of the fiercest warriors on the planet and is incredibly, incredibly powerful. She's strong enough to fight against Lobo, was trained to fight by Diana herself, and never goes down easy no matter who she's fighting against. Wally West is the nephew of Barry Allen, the Flash. He recreated the experiment that gave Barry his speed, and Wally ended up with super speed himself, becoming Kid Flash. In the end, Wally sacrificed his life to prevent the Reach from destroying the world, dying a hero. Because Wally couldn't perfectly replicate the experiment that gave the Flash his speed, Kid Flash is exceptionally slower than his mentor. Of course, by that I mean that he's just able to approach the speed of sound, so still not really slow. He also lacked more advanced techniques such as vibrating his molecules, and needed more time to accelerate and decelerate rather than being able to start and stop on the spot. But Kid Flash was actually able to turn that into a weapon, where he would cannonball into his opponents. Calder is the former protege of Aquaman, operating as Aqualad by his king's side, and as the first leader of the team. He briefly worked under deep cover as the loyal lieutenant of his father, Black Manta, to bring down the light and their partner. Eventually, Arthur retired his heroic duties and Calder took over the mantle of Aquaman, joined the Justice League, and even eventually became their leader. Calder is a master of Atlantean sorcery, being able to manipulate water in pretty much every way imaginable. But one thing that appears to be unique to him is creating hard water constructs. Basically, he can create swords and shields and weapons out of water, using them throughout a fight. He's also a skilled martial artist and a master fighter, able to put down even Superboy with relative ease. Victor Stone is a former star pupil and athlete from Detroit, and the son of Star Lab scientist Silas Stone. Following an explosion that left him with fatal injuries, his father saved his life by using a father box, which fused with his body. After coming to terms with his condition, Victor adopted the name Cyborg and joined the Outsiders, before later becoming a member of the Justice League. Thanks to his cybernetic enhancements, Cyborg is superhuman in pretty much every way. He can instantly repair his body, he's also got the ability to create cannons and weapons out of his body to use throughout a fight. Cyborg can also mentally control technology all around him, whether it's Earth or alien tech. And I said before that there's so much about his powers and his potential that he doesn't know or hasn't discovered yet, implying that Cyborg could become much, much more powerful in the future. Halo is a gifted individual created as a result of the fusion of Gabrielle Dua, deceased Karaki girl, with the spirit of a mother box. Imbued with numerous aura powers, Halo doesn't view themselves as Gabrielle anymore. Instead, they've chosen to go by Violet Harper as a civilian and Halo as a hero. They were a member of Nightwing's team before they joined the team. 
Ever since their resurrection, Halo has shown the ability to generate multiple colored auras, each of a different power. Red is able to create force fields, orange allows them to fly around, yellow is energy blast, green is the ability to create holograms or decoys of themselves, blue lets them fire out powerful blasts of light, indigo is connected to boom tubes, and violet lets them heal themselves and others, seemingly even resurrecting themselves from the dead. And then there's Halo's rainbow power, where they can tap into all their auras at once and use multiple powers simultaneously. Like Cyborg and his father box, Halo and the mother box have nearly unlimited potential, and they can move even higher up the list given time. Bart Allen is a speedster from the year 2056 and the grandson of the Flash. When he came to the past, he joined the team under the name Impulse. After Wally West's death, he took on the mantle of Kid Flash before later joining up with the Outsiders. Bart has super speed that way outclasses Wally, is more on par with the Flash himself. He's also able to create wind tunnels, vibrate his molecules and phase through objects, and he can use his speed to create air vortexes. Superboy, also known as Connor Kent, is a genomorph, a binary clone of Superman and Lex Luthor, and a founding member of the team. Superboy eventually revealed himself to the world and left the team in order to become a member of the Outsiders, would even go on to inspire the future Legion of Superheroes. Being a fusion between a Kryptonian and human, Superboy possesses all the physical powers of a Kryptonian, so super strength, super durability, but lacks the more refined powers, flight and heat vision and such. On top of that, he's not nearly as strong as the original Superman, but this might just be because he's not as old and Connor could grow into it. Regardless, Superboy is still incredibly strong on his own, easily the strongest member of the team, and like Superman, he's nearly indestructible, and basically nothing is able to put him down. Zatanna Zatara is a magician, a former member of the team and currently a member of the Justice League. She's the daughter of Zatara, one of the rotating hosts of Doctor Fate. Zatanna has a natural affinity for the mystic arts, is able to manipulate her magic in countless different ways. And that's really what makes Zatanna so powerful and honestly so scary. Just her unlimited potential and versatility. All she has to do is speak something backwards and it happens. And because of that, Zatanna is terrifying to go up against in a fight. Blue Beetle is a member of the Outsiders and a former member of the team. Now, he was briefly an agent of the Reach when his scarab was rebooted by Green Beetle, but he was subsequently freed from control by Satana and Isis, assisted by Dr. Fate and the team. With the alien scarab, Blue Beetle has superhuman strength, speed, and durability, as well as the power to create literally any weapon imaginable. Thanks to nanotechnology, Blue Beetle has essentially unlimited versatility. He could literally create whatever he wants, and his potential is really unmatched. I mean, Black Beetle was able to fight against the entire team all by himself. Blue Beetle should be theoretically right on par with that kind of power and potential. But the most powerful member of the team? Well, it has to be Miss Martian. She's the niece of Martian Manhunter, so it's basically all the same powers. She can shapeshift and change her form at will, completely altering her physical appearance, growing extra limbs, mimicking other people or animals, camouflaging into the background and becoming invisible, or even using this power to phase through objects. She's also maybe the most powerful telepath on the planet. At the very least, she has the most raw power, and she can use that to read the minds of others, control the minds of others, or destroy the minds of others with a mental blast. In short, Miss Martian is definitely the most powerful member of the team. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. Maybe you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video. That's amazing. 
Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you want to go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're going to see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.